of schedule? And then the answer, of course, was, well, no. And the next question is, well, you know, what are the traffic stats, right? Well, we're mean, live. We're live, by the yeah, way. I know I got it. Um, so anyway, just look at the traffic stats to let us, let us see, because sometimes people won't say that that's the case, right? They just want to enroll. And so we're going to get some information on the traffic stats and figure that out. Okay. But it well, can only help, as a wise man once said. Is it going to help or is it going to hurt? It can only help. Correct. Correct. Um, and we're live. We're live. Good. You know, the industry, the industry, our industry, as a business industry. Yes. Not in the not in teaching martial arts, but whether the industry knows it or not, we need help. We still need help. People need help. And I wish they'd open their minds and understand that because their lives can change. It's interesting, Matt. I mean, I, I this is, let me think. I opened my first school. I was 20, 47, that's 27 years ago. All the tools are out there, right? I mean, they were out there 27 years ago. The tools were out there. And more so than like if you were to go to a, a hair salon, as I'm using that as an example, but that was yeah. nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted you to be able to relate. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, they, uh, they don't have, I mean, a lot of these, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not educated in the hair industry, but I, I, they don't have traffic stats. Like how many calls did you get? How many appointments did you book? How many people came in? How many, you know, what are your revenue columns? How many men's haircuts did you do? How many, you know, you know, colors did you do? How many this did you do? Like, if we just would just like understand there's a system and a reason why it's so easy to fill in those holes and fill in the gaps. It's like if you didn't have a gas gauge on your car, <clears throat> you're probably going to run out of gas at some point because you just don't know. And uh, and either you're going to be surprised when the car gets started or you're going to be surprised that it didn't start because you didn't put gas in it. And that shouldn't be how we run our business. There shouldn't be surprises, right? It should be, we should be able to look at the numbers, look at the gauges and the dashboard and figure out what we need to do and how we need to get there. So the information is out there. For sure. Hello, Mr. Walls and hello, Mr. McClung. Hey guys. And Mr. Kessler. Kessler. So you may be the only three watching today. Aaron O'Neill. Hello. Very nice. Um, well, call your friends, let them know we're, we're about to drop some knowledge, give some ideas, right? Mm -hmm. now, Yo, you know, two weeks from right now, we'll be sitting in Dallas in a beautiful hotel, by the way. I think yesterday was the first time I actually saw that hotel it was on our the slideshow Roger had on the foundations group. It's a beautiful hotel. The Gaylord Texan. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, very nice hotel. So we'll be there. So all right. Well, are we are we live here sharing across the universe? Or are we just on your private Facebook page and all 14 of your friends have joined us? <laughs> oh, it's all I, dude, that's not, not possible. I only have 12 friends and and so I don't oh. know 14. So maybe we're on mine too. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, let's talk summer retention. I think what what does this tell us? I mean, with the with the uh, with the viewership here, either we need to uh, be canceled and go off, or a lot of people got wind of summer camps and they're running summer camps. That could be. Yeah. Yeah, or or the or Mets Tassel need to work on their retention on the Mets Tassel show. <laughs> Could be. Either way, this show is for us to banter anyway. That's right. That's right. All right. So let's talk about summer retention. There was a post in Century about how do you retain students through the summer, and there's a couple concepts and philosophies I think people need to understand. And the first one is retention is just important as recruitment. If you recruit, yeah, Mr. McClung says everyone has perfect retention. That's why, that's why they're not on. 
According uh, to them, they do, yeah. Look, wow, this is great. Aaron O'Neill, we launched our private lesson package for discount and the four-week mini seminar series for kids. Thank you for the ideas. It's going great. It's doing great. Congratulations. And, and by the way, everybody should do that because there's no way it can't do great. The only question on those things is, is it worth your time? You're not going to lose on it. You're not going to lose. You can, only, you can only gain, right? But let's talk about summer retention in these philosophies, Tass, and then I'll give you – I'll throw it to you to give some – you know, give a specific idea to retain through summer. But first thing is, as I said, you got to understand that as much focus this industry spends on recruiting and getting new students – because that's a common thing in this industry. Well, how many students do you sign up a month? Why don't they say, well, how many students do you keep, right? They're equally just as important, but because of the mentality that this industry has as one of the, you know, the main way or the only way to grow our business is to get new students. We, we don't focus as much energy and effort on retaining and keeping the students that we have. And, and so you have to understand retention is just as important. So that's one. The second thing is, is in, the, in the summer, here's the biggest mistake people make. And I saw it on some of the comments uh, on the post. But the other mistake that we make is when you're a martial arts instructor or school owner and you're looking at your roster and you say, oh, well, you know, Johnny, you know, he, I, he's fine because I know they told me he's going to be on vacation for the next six weeks. He leaves for the summer, he goes on vacation for six weeks. What you need to understand is you are an extracurricular activity in the eyes of a customer, even though we're a learning center and you know martial arts, that whole thing. But from the customer, this is an extracurricular uh, uh, activity for someone to do, whether it's to get in shape or get self-defense. And that activity is all, also based on routines and habits, okay? So even though we know that student is gone, because we know that student's on vacation, we're cool and we put that student out of mind because we expect them to be back as soon as they get back from vacation. But when that person's on vacation, sitting around, hanging out with their friends, doing whatever they're doing on vacation, and they're not having to go to martial arts every you know, day or three days a week or whatever it is, they realize sometimes Oh man, this has been really nice. And you know, you know, in six weeks, it's like, <clears throat> you know, I just got back, you know, I'll start again in a week, or maybe I'm gonna wait till school starts, and it gets away from them. So you have to understand that even though you know the reason why a student is gone, it doesn't mean that you don't have to keep working to keep that student engaged with your school. And on this, we're gonna give you some ideas <clears throat> on how to keep students engaged, how to get them excited. To, to come to your classes. A lot of you had some really good answers uh, on the post, but Tass, take it. What do you give give a thought? Well, you kind of pre-framed the medicine. I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll give you guys something here in a second, but you pre-framed it. And I said this yesterday on our foundations call. You know, we were, we were discussing schedule. I said it's not sexy. And I think the same thing applies with, with a lot of things, right? I don't think retention is sexy. And if I said to you, hey, listen, if I show you a way to keep a student versus get a new student, which one do you want to hear? I think 99% of people are going to say, well, show them how to get a new student. And you said it, but sometimes people, and I know this was me way back, right? It, it, you can absolutely create a, a, a dollar value to retain the student. I mean, there's, there's a correlation when you retain the student, right? And most people have a hard time understanding how that uh, correlation is to revenue. I mean, you would say, well, yeah, if we keep a student, I know it's, I'm keeping the extra hundred dollar a month payment or whatever that is or whatever you're charging. Right. But that's not as sexy sometimes as, Oh, but if I get a new student, it's another hundred dollars a month. Well, if you get a new one and you lose one, you're back to even, right. I mean, it, it, it provide your, you're charging the same price. So there's a whole, like, I won't bore you with the, the mathematical equation to go through, but I will tell you that the difference in a 1% retention rate going from, or let me use attrition, if, you, if you're if you losing 6% of your students versus losing 5% of your students, 
it's tens of thousands of dollars a year when you go through the formula and you figure this out. And it's an unbelievable revenue center in your school. And it, it, it deserves the, you know, your attention. And we cannot make that assumption. I think you said, you know, the vacation thing, I, you know, there's times that you've been on vacation and I, I would think of your students very similar to this. Like, what do you do when your best friend goes on vacation? You just not talk to him for three, four, five weeks. Or do you call them up and say, hey, man, I know you're going on vacation. I hope you have a great time. You know, uh, let me know how it goes. And maybe sometime during the vacation, you call and, hey, I know you're on vacation. But just want to check in. How is it? You guys having fun? You having a good time? And then when they get back from vacation, hey, how was vacation? That's how I think you should be treating your students as well. And you got to treat them that way, even though you know that they're gone and your expectation is, oh, well, once they're back, they're just going to come back in. They may or may not. So I think that's, you know, those are some important things. And so this comes up with MIA calls when our, when our instructors do that. Well, like you said, I know they're on vacation for six weeks. Great. Did we call them before to let them wish them a happy, you know, a, a, a good vacation? Did we call them during? If we got voicemail during, hey, I know you guys are on vacation, but just want to check in, let you know how much you guys are missed and can't wait for you guys to get back. Those are action steps that you can absolutely do to ensure and stack the deck in your favor that they do come back to you when they're done with vacation. So that's one of the things for people that are going on vacation. Right? Let me give you a tip. Let me give you a simple, 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 effective tip, uh, especially dealing with kids, if you work with kids. And if you deal with adults, just hang in there, right? Because <clears throat> adults can be the same thing. It's Because it's all about incentives and calls to action, right? And, and creating emotion. So if a student tells you they're gonna go on vacation, first of all, one of the things that you can do in the summer, and somebody posted this too, something similar, but have a point system over the summer. Meaning, by the way, this leads into, so everything we try to teach people is part of a bigger system. And on this show, sometimes we'll give you ideas and you can run with it, but they're just not gonna be as effective as if you understood the whole system. But what we like to do is always have a back to school party in the fall, right? A back to school party, why? Several reasons. We wait at least two or three weeks after school starts, number one, why? Because we know everyone's back from vacation. We know they're settled into their new school or their new grade, and we know they had time to make some friends. And now we know they, they can invite buddies to this back to school party. So there's reasons why we do that, right? Number two, people that have been on vacation that have not come back to your school, and you've been calling them, trying to get them back in class, and they're like, yeah, we will, we'll be back, we're gonna wait, we're gonna do this. When all else fails, you call them and say, hey, we're having our big back to school party, we'd love to see you, a lot of your friends would love to see you. Come, come to join us for the back to school party Saturday, September blank. We're gonna have demos and food and games and prizes and whatever. Right, and, and this is not a, a seminar or, or an elite conference where we're breaking down exactly how to do that, but you understand the concept. But the other reason we have a back to school party is during the summer, we have a point system where you can earn tickets or you can earn points. Why do we do this in the summer? Because everybody, not everybody, but you, you as an industry, I think we're getting educated in the industry where we understand that that um, we're not competing against the other martial arts school. You're competing against all the other activities that are out there. And again, I'm talking about if you deal with kids, right? Well, in the summer, that grows exponentially because now you're competing with a lot. You're competing with, you know, being out outside, running around with friends, being in pools all day, vacations, you're competing with a lot. So we got to do something over the summer to keep the encouragement high to get them to want to come to class. It's very simple. Every time you come to class from this date to this date in the summer, you're gonna get a point or you're gonna get a ticket. Let's use a ticket, right? So basically get a big cardboard box, cover it up with paper and just call it ticket prize box. I mean, it's this simple, I'm trying to dumb this down. Ticket prize box. Guys, every time you come to class, just for attending class, you're gonna get a ticket. I'm gonna put your name on it at the end of class, drop it in the box. That's it. Now, how do we create emotion? There's no emotion there. Well, the net other thing we do is we have on display things we are going to raffle off at our back to school party in the fall. So what does this do? Well, students that are just coming in the summer, 
your retention becomes higher because a lot of these kids are emotionally vested in trying to win one of these prizes. And we have a lot of prizes, but we may only have one big grand prize. And, and by the way, some of you will say, well, now you're competing with yourself. But a grand prize is like a PlayStation 5. That could be a grand prize. It could be a drone. It could be, you know, $400 gift certificate, $500 gift certificate. I mean, whatever. One of those. But then we have like a few weapons we're going to raffle off, a uniform, a couple T-shirts. Like we have a lot of prizes up there. And we'll have them displayed. So we're going to pick the winners at our back to school party. So how do you get tickets or points, right? Well, you get a ticket for every time you come to class. Now, throughout the whole summer on Wednesdays and Thursdays in our system, right? We do Wednesday and Thursdays are what we call our B days where we're doing partner drills, line drills, pad drills, kicking drills, music's on, not curriculum. So every Wednesday and Thursday in the summer is a buddy day. If you bring a friend to class, you get an extra ticket. So that class, you'll get two tickets. I can give the buddy a ticket, right? Because we'll have a drawing for buddies or non-students at this back to school party as well, okay? So we'd want the buddy to get back, but if that buddy becomes a student, then their ticket will be eligible to win one of these big prizes, okay? If they enroll. If a student sign, if a buddy, so if I'm a student and my buddy signs up for our summer special or a trial, that student will get five tickets that referred that student. And if that student ends up enrolling, they get to do what we call our ticket tornado, where they hold the end of the, the roll of tickets, we put our finger in the middle of the roll, and we get the entire class and parents to count, three to five seconds, whatever you wanna do, they spin around as fast as they can and wrap themselves in tickets, rip it off, take them home, put their names on all of them, come back, put it in the prize box. Now, here's the vacation tip. We tell all our students before they go on vacation that when they're on vacation, if they send us a postcard from where they're at, we'll have a bulletin board. We can put up a, a postcard. They'll, their postcard will be here. When they get back from vacation, they go to that board, pull their postcard down. We'll accept a max of one a week, one postcard a week. We don't need 100 postcards from kids. So just one a week will suffice. And they will get two tickets for every postcard. Once they return to class, look for their postcard on the board, take it off, hand it to the instructor, and they'll get their two tickets for every postcard that they sent while they were gone. Well, what does that do? First of all, kids are excited to see their postcards up on the wall. And secondly, they're excited to get back and get their tickets because they know about the big back to school party that we're gonna have in the fall and they wanna get back to get their tickets. Well, if they're not there, how do they know about it? Well, this is why we have constant contact or emails and communication, like Shane said, when they're on vacation. You can have a picture of the prizes and hey, send us a postcard if you're on vacation and come back in class. When you give us your postcard, you're gonna get your tickets. So this is just another way. And some of you do something like this. I think maybe I gave you some extra details on this to make it exciting to get the kids to want to come to class. So now we have two different ideas that you have to retain for the summer. Throwing it back to tasks. What else? That's it. That's all I got. I mean, I don't know what else to By do. By the way, that's all they need. But, you know, this show, we like to drag it out a little. Yes, so, uh, so uh, I just got done talking to a couple clients this morning. And um, if you're on edge and you're not using the social media calendar, shame on you. Um, I don't know if you guys understand the hours that go into that. Um, and the hours that go into it don't matter for us. It matters for you, right? So, um, and by the way, we use the same social media calendar. <laughs> so on that social media calendar, and if you're not on edge, you should get on edge just for the social media calendar alone, pay for the cost of edge. But here's the thing. Um, in, I believe it's in June this month, there's what we have, what we call the eight weeks of summer of fun, right? There's a summer of fun, it's eight weeks, it's themed out. And sometimes we look at these things as, oh, that's corny, I don't wanna do that in my school. But I'll tell you, here's the thing, we are not a seasonal sport, right? We, we, we're, we're all year, every year, and we're, we're a lifestyle. And 
as instructors and as owners and as teachers, oftentimes we come in, we line up the same way every day, we wear the same uniform, nothing changes about our school, it's the same four walls, we haven't changed the paint, haven't changed the interior design, I'm not going there with that, so you don't need to remodel your school, but you need to make it different, you need to make it funny, you need to make it exciting, and part of what that is, is we sometimes have to put our, our, our heads, and again, I'm talking for kids, you can do the same thing for adults, but in the mind of a child. And so what is the eight weeks of summer of fun? Well, same thing. Every week, Wednesday, Thursday, we have a different theme. One week, it might be crazy hair week. So when the kids come to class, they're going to do their hair and it's going to be crazy, right? Um, we actually had one of our students who did his hair like Hawk on uh on Cobra Kai. I mean, it was like huge and red and it was hilarious. So, you know, doing a crazy hair day, doing a decades day where they're dressing up from the 80s, right? A backwards day. You'll see kids come in with their uniforms on backwards, their belt tied behind their back. It just makes it fun and exciting. And you can sit and try and think of all these things and do them yourself. And you'll come up with some good ideas. Or you can just go to the, to the, to the social media calendar <clears throat> where we've already done the thinking for you. We've already done all the graphics for you. We've already done the poster for you and say, that's what I'm going to do and just go print and implement or copy and paste it to your, your Facebook group or your email and just do it every week. And, and that this is what creates fun and excitement for the kids because now every week and tell them guys, and remember next week is Hawaiian shirt week. So Find that crazy Hawaiian shirt. We want to see who's got the craziest Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt for next week. And if you want to, now you flip it back to what the Metzger just said. You give a ticket in each of the classes for the craziest Hawaiian shirt or the craziest hairdo or the best shades or the best decades costume or whatever it is. And they can earn tickets that way. So now you're getting people that actually want to participate and go all out because they know that they can earn more tickets if they participate in this eight week summer of fun. So these are ways that you can keep it exciting in your school and, and keep your instructors excited as well because it's something different. Mets and I were talking the other night and we were just talking about, you know, building great instructors in the old, we were, you know, reminiscing about the old days and, you know, why can't the old days be nowadays? And, and, the, and he was saying, you know, the crazy stuff you used to do in the school, you know, they just come in and they'd have fun. And it was all about having a good time and about having fun. And I think sometimes we, we, we lose that. I'm not saying don't have disciplined classes where we teach great classes, but we can do both. We can have fun and exciting classes while everyone has the respect and the discipline of the class. So, you know, that's another thing that you easily could implement and uh, get your themed weeks of what are you doing for the eight weeks of summer of fun? And a couple of times in there, I would do, you know, treat week as well where they get, you know, a, a popsicle or a, a, a one of the, we do the, I don't even know what they're called. They're in the plastic tube, right? Freezies or whatever they are. Um, just because we find they're less of a mess, they get them after the class, not before. That way they're on their way out so they're not melting in the school. And, uh, you know, we do those on Wednesday, Thursday. So this is a way, and if you put your mind again back in the eyes of, of, of parents or kids, how many times do you have parents that say, well, my kid just doesn't, he doesn't want to come to class? Well, no. 90% of the time, that's not the case. 90% of the time, the kid doesn't want to leave what they're doing right now to come to class. But when you talk to them after class, they loved it. So how can we get them and entice them to want to come to class? Well, if you're doing treat week, that's just another way that the parents can help and entice them to come into the classes. And, and, and by the way, that's another little silly thing that works well. But part of the system is when we do summer treat week, we'll change up the theme every week. And we only do it on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Why? Because that's the day that it, we have buddy days throughout the whole summer. So not only do they get to bring their friend they may be hanging out with all, all day long, uh, but after class, they get to get a popsicle or an ice cream cup. Or as I've mentioned before, we've rented, uh, we've got an ice cream truck to park there. And, and we told them just park here between five and seven because our kids' classes would end around seven, 7.30 and then it's adults. Um, and you can do this for adults, by the way, if you wanted to, but we gave them a budget. We said, look, what can you give them for $2 a piece, add it all up, give them the choices, and then I'll settle up with you at the end of the night. And that's a whole different deal. But again, it's just about making things fun, exciting, and getting your students to want to come like Taz said, 
It's about enticing them to stop doing and get to class. And there's a little bit extra excitement about getting to class. So you got to do that. And then, and then, you know, we talk about fun and exciting classes. One of the things that you should do in the summer is rent out a pavilion and for no cost at all, we're doing a customer appreciation picnic, right? And just have a big grill out, a big picnic. We get a sign up sheet. By the way, it, that, I, it might be. Do you know, is this on edge? The paperwork on edge where the I, parents can sign up? If I was a bet man, I'd say yes, it is. Maybe probably there from somewhere. But anyway, you get parents who will sign up to bring the hamburger buns and you have X amount of spots and then hot dog buns. And then we supply the meat, the hot dogs, the hamburgs, but we need cheese, we need desserts, we need sides. And parents all volunteer to bring that. And it's just a big gathering. Now, what do you do with this gathering? You don't just market it to your students who are there. You market it and get on the phone and call every student that ever quit and say, we're having a big reunion picnic. Notice how I changed the theme. When I'm calling students who have quit, I'm saying we're having a big championship martial arts reunion picnic. It's gonna be at XYZ Park and Saturday between the hours of this and this. We're gonna have food, we'll do some demos. It's gonna be great. We'd love to see Sarah or Johnny or whoever come back and we'd love to see you. Because you gotta remember, when somebody's on vacation, if somebody's out, if somebody quit, your main focus is just get engagement again. Let's just start getting engagement. And then you can reactivate or spark that motivation or emotion again to get them to back back into class. So everybody here should schedule some kind of summer picnic and it should be an annual thing. Should be an annual deal, no charge. That's the key. We're not here to make money on that. It's no charge, it's free. But right? you, you, can, you can do, I know some of you guys may think, right, you know, well, we do class in the grass or class in the park or whatever. I think that's great, right? Um, but they're there for 30 or 45 minutes. So this is, this is something different. This is going to be like on a Saturday or a Sunday, potentially, and it's going to be probably a three or four or five hour event, right? That you can do with your students, and you can have so much fun with this. I mean, we we, we do a picnic every year, um, and it's kind of a cross between a seminar and a picnic. The picnic idea just by itself is fantastic, but then we'll we'll finish where we do it's it's like called splash ball. So we get the big they're like big Nerf balls. And then we have, I don't know, five or six big, uh, big tubs, right? And we'll fill those all with water and we set them all up and then we soak all the balls and then there, it's splash ball and you got to get on a spot. You can look up how to play it, but the kids get drenched, but it's basically dodgeball with, with, with wet balls and they absolutely have a blast doing it. It's so much fun. But one of the other things I was going to tell you, if you are a school that does not have a budget, like that, that you're just getting by and you don't have enough money to buy prizes, I wanted to bring this up. If you do the, the, the tickets for the summer and you have a big back to school party, which by the way, if you're listening to this, you, you, you should have a back to school party planned. I mean, so just a great way to bring excitement, retain and recruit. Okay, that's free. The back to school party is free. We're not charging, right? But for recruiting and retaining, everyone should be doing that every year. But um, one of the most exciting things and this is about your personality and your culture, but one of the most exciting things that kids love for grand prize, and we can do like two of them, is the grand prize winners will get to pie their favorite instructor in the face. And we have aluminum pans on display, and we tell them, we're gonna fill it with whipped cream, and if you wanna take it a step further, it could be any staff members, make a, a, a list of staff members, like Sensei or Sabanem or Shihan or whatever, or Mr. or Miss so-and-so, and list your staff members and tell your students at the end of class to go up there and put a check mark near the person, near the staff member that they would pie in the face if they were the winner. And then you make a big deal of it when you see all these check marks near the head instructor or whatever, and then the instructor could joke with it and say, guys, look at all the check, what about Miss so-and-so? You guys gotta get her, you gotta get her. And kids are gonna be going, no, we wanna get you. I mean, again, it's just building that emotion and building that excitement. Now, on top of all of that, if your classes are boring, <laughs> pies and snow cones aren't going to save you, right? You got to make sure that you have fun and exciting classes. You are not the one to judge that. 
The students that are staying with you are not the ones to judge that. It's the attrition rate that judges that. If your attrition rate is higher than 5%, you're not doing a great job teaching classes. You're just not. And that's the great thing about numbers and stats is the stats will tell you. I love it when I've talked to people before and say, well, my students love my classes. Well, what about the 400 students that quit over the last two years? Did they love your classes, right? There's always an audience for everybody, right? But we wanna make sure that we appeal to the masses. And the only way you can do that is by checking your curriculum. Somebody posted in the, in the question, uh, you know, they have a special summer curriculum. Well, we wouldn't change our curriculum per se for the summer, but we may change up our theme days and like what we do on some of our workout days, but we do that with the treats and with the, with the buddy days and, and everything else. But you got to make sure that you're, you're, you're doing that stuff and making sure here's the challenge for all of you. If you teach class and I, it might've been Dave Kovar that said this forever, right? Smiling, sweating, and learning. So everybody says, yeah, SSL, smiling, sweating, learning, right? But if you look at a class and here's your challenge, look at your class tonight. Are they sweating and are they learning? Those two things we cover as martial arts instructors the most of the time. You're teaching, but teaching all the time and the details could be boring. So you're teaching and sweating is easy. Just start telling them to do burpees and they're gonna sweat within a minute and a half. They'll start sweating. But are they smiling? They gotta be smiling. So that's your challenge today and tomorrow. Teach a class and make sure that every student in that class and parent Okay, or adult student, every one of them smiled during that class at some point. That's your challenge, and let's see if you can make that happen. So, so let, me, let me let me give let me give, well. Number one, you said sweating is easy, right? And and I it just it, it it is easy, but it's easy to forget because we're too busy teaching and having them learn. And sometimes, because most martial arts, a lot of martial arts are designed around memorization. It's lot less sweat and more like mind stuff right and you should check and see and i you just remind me of something i used to do this years ago and this was just slang but i'd be like all right who's got the sauce and i would do one of these and i wipe my forehead and, and then put the sweat on the floor right and if the kids couldn't do it we had to work harder and then it was like it became a mission that sir i got the sauce sir i got the sauce like that was the idea behind it just to get them sweating and get them going. So that's number one. Number two, you know, the way we teach the classes and the classes are designed is we always say finish with the fun. And if you want a very easy way to have kids smile, we do what's called push-up grappling at the end. Of, this is one example, right? But push-up grappling at the end of class where two kids are, are, are facing each other. They're within arm's length. They're in push-up position. And they literally have to reach and try and pull the arm out of the other child. And the first person who, uh, you know, pulls their, their, their partner off to off balance three times is the winner and you look around the room whether it's for adults or for kids there's not one person who's not laughing and smiling having a good time doing that so that's a, something super easy you can take tonight do push-up grappling have them both face each other reach across try and grab their arms pull them off balance first one to to, to, to take their opponent off balance three times they're the winner and they'll do this all class i mean they have to have a blast doing it so that's a very specific example but too many times we spend too much time telling and not enough time teaching and they got to get reps and they got to get the sweat and they got to get the sweat. Hey, and by the way, if anybody is on here, right. And I'm throwing it out there. You can take it as you want, right. At the end of the day, do you think it'll help or hurt you? Do you think it's worth the investment? But as we're, as you're talking, I, I noticed, you know, Tass, we, we go into seminar mode just a little bit on this. Right. And we really, we, for anyone that's listening, we really give you some some good information, I think. But we're also careful because this is not a lecture. This is not a seminar. This is a fun show just to give the industry some ideas to help our industry. But August 5th and 6th, Dallas is closed. We have a Dallas event coming up in two weeks in Dallas. That's our elite event. And we had 25 seats available for non-elite members to come and check out. out. That was sold out weeks ago. That's that's closed. So it's not, not existent. But August, I'm sorry, 6th and 7th, August 6th and 7th here in Orlando, Florida, at our school, at our World Training Center, you can 
we only have 20 seats available. That's it, 20. And I think we have five people registered, I think, already. So there's 15 schools left, 15 spots left. We started marketing this this week um, just to edge members. But now I'm just telling you guys, because as you're talking, Tass, if anybody wants to come down, it's $199 for the seminar. And, and that includes two people from your school, right? You fly into Orlando, it's a Friday, Saturday. That includes dinner Friday night. But the important thing is, is stuff that we go over and say, we're not, and I keep saying this because I think it's important to know, we're not taking you to a hotel. We're not in a ballroom. You are in one of our schools. You're in our world training center in our conference room with a glass front overlooking the floor. So you can see the things we're talking about right now in action live. And one of the things that you're gonna see is a mass enrollment, right? Just in time for back to school. So it's the next level summit. I'm just looking at it on the board, August 6th and 7th. And if you think it's worth 199 bucks plus 150 for a hotel room for one night, that's 350 bucks plus airfare, 200 bucks, I don't know. 450, 550, say $600. Is it worth $600 to come to a two day event where we're gonna cover all kinds of things for back to school and ending the school year and seeing a mass enrollment live and our classes live where you can ask questions and we're gonna be there going over stuff and, and have our team, the Maya, you know, some of the Maya team and our team here hitting you guys with good information. If you are, I, the reason why I push this so much is if, and it's not open for elite members, by the way, it's not because you guys get it. You guys see this. It's not open for CMA affiliate schools. It's not open for elite members. If for people who have never come to one of our events or visited us here, because it's important for me to show you that we do practice what we preach and it's important for me to try to help you as much as we can so you can see it live. Then you can form your own opinion. Now the question, the only question you have here is, will I get that $600 investment back if I go? Even if you're sitting here saying, I just don't know about these guys, I don't know. At the end of the day, you don't have to know about us. Do you think you're gonna get something that will generate an extra $600 from coming to this event that you wouldn't have generated before? At any point in your martial arts history, will it generate an extra $600? And that's just a crazy question. If it doesn't, you call me and I will send Tassel to work at your school for two weeks for free. <laughs> Notice I said you, Tess. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, no problem. So anyway, I'd love to see you guys here. So you the fine see print. See the fine print. Yeah. The fine print is you can't go to a seminar, take in all the information and go back and do zero, right? You go back and you execute something. And I, I don't know anyone that's ever come to any one of our seminars that has come and, and, and said, you know what? It, it, it wasn't worth 10 times what, what, what we paid for it. I mean, Literally. And by the way, that everyone says that, that wants you to come to their seminars. Everyone says that. And I understand that. But when it's reality. Tennessee will be there. Oh, very nice. Great. Are you all set up and enrolled? That'd be great. Okay. Wow, there you go. See? Come on, Mets. Everybody may say it, but task delivers, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> Is that your alias? Did you just type that? I did. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so it, it, the thing is, is it's important for me because I don't know who's on here watching right now, right? But this industry has a has a has a unique way of bashing other people that they're not familiar with. And you know, I don't care about that. Anybody can say anything they want. But you're an idiot if you say something about something or someone or an event that you've never attended, right? Once you come to the event, then go back and get on the show and say, hey, I was there um, and uh, it was it was awful. And they took my $199, you know, and I would never do it again. And there would be nothing I can say, except I would say, did what didn't you like? I would say, what did you like? But I've never experienced that. So that's why I don't even know what to say. And then, uh, by the way, here you go. It, we will have live in October. Uh, we'll be doing My Elite in Tampa, right? And if you come to that event, you can come early, visit our schools here. You can visit Miss Chris Rodriguez. Uh, she's in Tampa. But my point is, we want to help this industry. Help us help you. Help us help you. 
And and by the way, I, I also know that there's a lot of other people out there, consultants and seminars, and you got to pick. And you when when everything's coming at you, and people are trying to pitch you on a on an event or seminar, sometimes you you throw your hands up because you're coming. Things are coming from all angles, and you just say these guys just want money because it's coming from all angles. But these people may make you a lot of money. These people may give you some great ideas. And it's not just us, but I only can speak for us, right? Because guess what? I personally never attended some of the other seminars and stuff, but I do know some great people in the industry that offer consulting that I know can help you. But ours just happens to be the best. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Ours happens to be next in August, right? So would would love to uh would love to see you guys here and register because by the way the whole 20 thing you know that's a call to action that's to get you to register so you don't lose a spot but this is real because we're not in a hotel i can't take 200 people now in dallas if you want to come well you can't come to dallas now but if you were to come by dallas i don't know there's 250 people at that event that's that's it that's sold out that's done 250 is the event but if you're going to sit in one of my schools in our world training center 20 that's it okay and by the way here's the link just check it out check out that link and if you want to take one of those spots let us show you a school take pictures grab some brochures whatever's there is yours take the schedules yeah take the schedule like i i we don't hide anything right we don't we you know if you're if you come into our school we don't hide. If you want a schedule, take a schedule. If you want to take pictures, take pictures. You can ask any questions, but we're going to give you a two-day seminar on things that are going to be very relevant for back to school season, fall, and, and the rest of the year. Plus, watch a live mass enrollment. Watch our instructor do it live and watch them sign up 50, 60, 70% of the people on one-year agreements there while you're watching live. So you can then say, oh, they're not, they're not BSing me. They really do do that. And now I understand and I see exactly how they do it. So there it is. Um, but anyway, uh, there it is. Tass, I think we gave them some really good stuff. If you didn't see the beginning of this, I think we gave some really good ideas and concepts and philosophies on understanding retention. And uh, if you use that, again, Tass, you said it at the beginning, if you do what we say, it can't hurt you. It can only help you, right. can only improve your your retention. And you also said, Tass, there's a formula, and we, we don't have time to go into that, but how improving your attrition rate by just 1% is worth tens of thousands of dollars over the course of a year and two years and three years, tens of thousands, by just improving your attrition 1%, your retention. Anything? Yeah, well, look, I mean, we, we you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we get on here and we start just talking, right? Like, well, here's the topic. Let's just start talking. And um, the, the things that we're giving you guys in the beginning today, all those things all tie together. And, um, you know, sometimes we give you one off here and a different idea here, which is also, by the way, and I'll just call it out. Sometimes that can be dangerous, right? And I shouldn't say da dangerous is not the right word. It, it can be maybe misleading because not we see, effective. you see the results that people, other people are getting. You're like, well, it didn't work that well for me, but because you don't have all the details that go with it. And it's like you said earlier, it's everything's part of a bigger system and you're seeing a little beast piece of it, right? Because it's on the Mets Dazzle show, right? But this is something that if you go back and you watch the beginning and you see the two or three things that we said and how they tie together, you can absolutely. And by the way, there's more of those things that attach to that, right? But go back and look at it and execute and implement. It's not, I mean, you can do this, you know, like you said, with, with, with little, very, very little budget and it will increase your retention. It'll increase, it, 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 you're going to get to know your students at a different level by having a picnic and by being around them. You know, the more you know about your student, let me just say it this way. I heard this years ago. You don't have a money problem. You have a relationship problem. And, and there's that, there's a lot of truth to that. You have a relationship problem with your students, you know, when, when you can go up to your student and just tell them what you'd like them to do, and they say, okay, tell me what I need to do, you have a great relationship, you have great rapport, you have a lot of trust, and that's what doing some of these events is going to create with for you and with you because it gives you an opportunity to speak with parents outside of the office environment where you're constantly asking for money, and now you get to know them on a personal level, 
Doesn't mean you be, be personal, but you can be personable and ask questions about them, know more of their family, the siblings, the pets, the dynamics, all the things. And all of a sudden, they feel more like they can, they know you, like you, and trust you at a deeper level. And then the floodgates start to open. So we do it for the reason of retention. We do it for the reason of building relationships. Um, and, and that's what the goal is. So every day in your school, forget the picnic, forget all that stuff. Work on building relationships. And you can do that in 30 to 60 seconds with people every day, as long as you're consistent with doing it and you make it intentional and not by accident. You know, that'll that'll help you guys out a ton. Yeah, exciting stuff. Yep. And oh look, look, Chris Rodriguez giving credit. <laughs> Woo! You don't have a money problem, you have a relationship problem. How about it? How about it? Dang, I'm gonna write this one down. I don't know that she's ever given me props. <laughs> you just make a note of that on uh, June 10th, 2021 at 1249. All right. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you again for allowing us to, I don't know, banter, give you some ideas. But I would love to see you. I'd love to meet you. Love to grab dinner with all of you, uh, you know, in August, uh, October, you know, in Tampa. But you can come in August, you know, in, in Tampa, we're going to be at a hotel because we're going to have hundreds of people. In August, you're going to be sitting in one of our schools and you're going to be able to see things that you just don't always get to see when you're not in someone's school. And I want people to see that we are a martial arts school just like you are. Right. And, and I think it's powerful. We have the I remember people would come and visit and they would say, wow, it's so makes me feel so good that you have the same challenges that I do. I said, we absolutely do. We absolutely do. Like everyone thinks that it's just perfect and we got it all down and we don't ever have problems. We got problems. We got problems right now. I have, for whatever reason, a little COVID outbreak with the staff right now, more than we have in, you know, a year and a half. I mean, it's just crazy. Like just one school, you know, where three instructors or something like just all tested positive. Um, you know, so yeah, and guess what? We had a shutdown on Monday, Tuesday, we were virtual at that school and, you know, got another instructor in there. I mean, we, we have we have problems. We have problems just like everybody else. But I think we have some, uh, we just have answers. We have solutions to the problems. We don't panic. I could show you text messages like to the program director saying, it's not a big deal. Take a deep breath. We got this. We've been through worse. You'll be fine. You know? So anyway, would love to see you guys hit the link hit the link and at least check it out and, and see if you can snag one of those 15 spots left before uh, the big, the marketing opens up. I know again that I think they only, they only put a, a message out to the edge members this week. Um, but I'm sharing it with you guys. Cause as Tass was talking, I was sitting here thinking, let me just let you guys know, you know, if you, if you want to get in on that, cause we'll get the 20 spots. I'm not worried about that, but you know, I'm not worried about, that at all actually you know what i mean it's it's we're doing this to help you guys out so would love to see you in orlando and we will see everybody next week and then the following week we'll probably take a break because we'll be doing yeah. some do we have wealth next week or two I'm, uh, yeah the following week i'm sorry that's the following yes week. yeah so there we'll see you next week yes. yep we will see you next week so thank you guys good luck go execute and we will see everybody next week all right everybody thank you guys thanks man yeah, i'm gonna call you Thanks, Chris. Talk Redwood. about real world problems. Appreciate that. We'll do that. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye bye.